Hello ladies and janitors, welcome to my second channel. Today I'm going to talk about how to detach from people, how to not get attached and how to overcome your emotions. I get a lot of questions from my followers saying to me, Simone, how do you talk to so many guys and not get attached? I actually don't talk to that many guys because I'm very quick to cut people off. Watch my previous video, red flag, I'm out of there. Most people have red flags, so really there's not a lot left, but yes. I don't really get attached and I'll tell you why. Because of the fact I'm a psychology student and from my last very painful breakup, I now know that majority of the time what we're feeling, especially in terms of addiction or lust, it's just the chemical reaction in your brain and it's not real. So if you watch my manipulation video, all of those tactics work, okay? They even work on me. You know why? It's because you, you can't help this chemical reaction in your brain. For example, when someone's doing that hot and cold on you, it works. It works every time. It works on me. But the difference is, because I know that it's just a chemical reaction in my brain, I don't let it affect me. For example, this guy was doing hot and cold on me. And, and when he started doing that, even though it low-key made me obsessed with him, I never replied to him again. I'm still thinking about him right now. Because of this, because of the reaction in my brain, I'm still thinking about him, but I didn't act on it because I know that it's not real. Additionally, how to not get attached. I talked about this in my, I think it's my dating video on my main channel, but I'm, re I'm really, really, really against talking stages. I think they're juvenile. They should have been left in high school and early university. What happens in a talking stage? You get attached so easily because you're talking to them every day. You're calling them. You're always checking your phone. You're waiting for that dopamine hit, that message that they're sending to you. By the time you meet up, two things can happen. One, it goes really, really well. Two, you meet them. They're nothing like what they are online. Now you've wasted all this time. Now at this point, you're likely already attached to them, which means you're even more likely to ignore the red flags Ignore the fact that you don't like them that much in real life and then give them a chance. And that's dangerous. Been there, done that, never made that mistake ever again. If I'm interested in someone romantically, you plan a date. We can very briefly talk before meeting, but if you want to message me every day, I'm not doing it. I've had guys do this recently and I will literally say to them, why are you messaging me every day? And then they're usually like, oh, I just want to talk and get to know you. I'm like, get to know me in real life. Because I find, you know, a chemical thing in your brain, the moment I start talking to them too much, you're done. You're attached already. Luckily for me, this attachment breaks in like a couple of days. And because I know it's not real, I get over it faster. I just don't think it's a good idea. And people are very, very different online to what they are in real life. Some people, you may not even like them in real life. Some people, you may not like them over text and then you meet them in real life and they're surprisingly completely nothing like their dating profile. Also, if you're dating, you don't want to waste time, right? You don't want to get into like five talking stages. Do you know how much energy that takes? I can confidently say I've never been in a talking stage and I do not plan on it. It's really important that you guys are able to distinguish between what's real and what's not. For example, like I told you, that guy was doing hot and cold on me. It made me f obsessed because of reaction in my brain. But because I know what I know, I didn't react on it. And I knew what he was doing. Therefore, I never replied to him again. Versus, if you don't know this stuff, you'll probably just think, Oh my god, I like this guy so much now. Why do I like this guy so much? I'm in love with him. There must be something about him that's great if I like him. No. No, it's just the dopamine and the oxytocin, I promise you. Additionally, when dating, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Men hate when I say this. Every video when I'm like, women, even guys, you need to date multiple people. Because think about it this way, you only date one person, you invest all your time into one person. You don't even know if there's better people out there who are suited for you. Additionally, now you have all this time to obsess over one person. And also, you are single and not in a relationship until they ask you. Also, detached energy is a lot more attractive. Energy is everything. When someone is obsessed with me and they're so needy, I get really freaked out. Don't you have a life? I don't want to get into a relationship where someone's entire life is me. That's terrifying. 
and unhealthy. Maybe if you're into toxic relationships, you'll love that, but that is a really big red flag in my opinion. Also, if you're someone that finds themselves getting attached to people really easily, you need to <laughs> introspect on why that is. Uh, you're probably missing something in your life which is why you're seeking it in another person. And I think once you're able to identify this and work on it, your obsession and attachment with other people will very quickly diminish. To prevent attachment very fast, avoid revealing personal information too early on. Like someone has to work to know the personal stuff about you. You can't just like freely give it out. Same with them. So if the guy or the girl is telling you very personal things about themselves or sob stories, you're also more likely to get attached to them. You're also more likely to get attached to a hookup if you know more information about them and you cuddle them afterwards. If you're someone that's into hooking up, don't do that. You'll get attached. And obviously, just like texting online, if you're spending a lot of time with them, you're going to get attached. How can you not get attached? Even if you don't like that person, you're probably going to get attached to them. It's entirely possible to not like someone and then get attached. Because I told you, half of it is this thing going on in your brain. But once you know and you can identify what's real and what's not, and you know these manipulation tactics, even though you know some people they don't do these manipulation tactics, it's just who they are, you will be able to save yourself from attachment. I always say this as well, whatever you're feeling right now, it's going to pass. And I know myself well enough that if I get the false sense of attachment, I'll be over it in a week, two max. Two max. This feeling is not going to last forever. It doesn't mean I'm in love with them. It doesn't mean I want to be with them. It doesn't even mean I want to talk to them again. The brain is a funny and miraculous thing. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Love you guys.